Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be doing a overview and strategy guide for Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Adam Mask and today we are going to be doing an overview and strategy guide on how to play me in the brand new Marvel Villainous set, Mischief. Madame Mask is both a Magia boss as well as a hired assassin. Therefore, she must decide whether a Vanquish action goes towards her contract or towards her Vendetta. If she is able to make eight Vendetta Vanquish actions, then she will have won the game. And you're gonna be able to actually keep count of this by using this Vendetta tile tracker here. Now this is going to start at zero and go all the way up to eight, and the moment that it hits eight, doing your eighth Vendetta Vanquish, you will win the game as Madame Mask. Madame Mask also has some special rules. When you're playing as her, she will always go first in the game, and she also starts the game with six power. Madame Mask is a very difficult villain to play. She does not have any power actions in her domain. Now there are a couple of ways for her to gain power and one of them is by doing a contract vanquish action. A contract vanquish action will gain you power equal to the hero's strength that is being vanquished. And the other way to gain power would be to control locations in your domain. In order to control a location, you must have cards that have Nefaria Family in their name, like Nefaria Family Thugs, Nefaria Family Soldiers, or the Nefaria Family Leaders. If you have one of these cards at a location in your domain and there are no heroes in that location, it is considered controlled. Now at the beginning of your turn, when you're moving to a controlled location, you will gain the power specified on those Nefaria family cards. And this is accumulative, meaning that if you have multiple Nefaria family members at a location, you will gain power for each of them. And another niche way to gain some power is actually on the Vendetta tile itself. You can activate this in order to gain a little bit of power depending on where your Vendetta tracker is. So there will always be options to get more power, but ultimately you're going to have to learn how to play this character kind of from the ground up. I am so excited to go into more depth about this character with you, but before you sit down and play this character, please read this entire villain guide that comes within the box. As well as, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, it is Ravensburger, the creators of Disney Villainous and Marvel Villainous alike, and the creator of many other great games. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's video, and if you're interested in their games, go ahead and visit the website down below. With that, we are gonna go ahead and look over Madame Mask's cards, the four locations in her realm, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to be giving you three tips and strategies to hopefully improve your gameplay with her. First up, I went ahead and bundled all the Nefaria Family cards in one section. This includes the Nefaria Family Thugs, the Nefaria Family Soldiers, as well as the Nefaria Family Leaders. And each of these has a very similar ability. They give you a certain amount of power cost that you will get if you're moved to this location, as long as it is controlled. The more common of these is going to be the Nefaria Family Thugs. This is a one power cost, one strength card that will gain you one power when moved to this location at the start of your turn if it is controlled. And then we've got the Nefaria Family Soldiers, which are one power cost, but two strength. They will go ahead and give you two power when moved to if the location is controlled. And then lastly, we've got only one copy of this version, and this is the Nefaria Family Leaders. This is a two power cost, two strength card that will give you three power when moved to this location at the start of your turn if it is controlled. And with all of these cards, it is important that you get these all into your domain. This is going to be the the best way to gain power throughout your gameplay as they will literally become your power action spots. There is two locations that I would put these on first if possible, and that would be Manhattan as well as the Nefaria Castle. And the reason for this is that both Hell's Kitchen and Magia Casino Ship both have activate actions, which can be used to gain you power on your Vendetta tile. 
And then we have the two power cost Count Nefaria card. This card has three strength and it says, reveal cards in the fate deck until you reveal a hero, then play that hero to Count Nefaria's location. This is the card that can help you build the engine to get heroes into your domain in order to get your vendetta. This is a must play and then you must use it at every chance possible. Also remember, do not vanquish with Count Nefaria because you need this to stay on the board, even though it may be tempting to remove some heroes with him. An additional fact would be don't place him alongside the Nefaria family members unless you already have one at each location because his location will likely not be controlled. There's going to be a lot of heroes here. At least that's the hope. The Syndicate is a three power cost, four strength ally card that says when the Syndicate is played, relocate all heroes in Madame Mask's domain to this location. This can be a great way to gain back control of other areas in your domain, or just to create a big hero vendetta funnel at one location. The nice thing about this is that even though it is three cost and a little bit on the pricier side, this has four strength, which is phenomenal. And you should definitely be using this to defeat those heroes that are moved to its location. This is a really good card as long as you're able to actually use the effect and get in a couple of heroes. Now, if you are not able to use the effect, at least play it to an area that already has a hero with it. And then we have the hood, which can I just say, it makes me so excited that the hood is now a card that can be played. I absolutely love the hood, but this is a four power cost, three strength ally card that says the hood can only be used for contract vanquish actions. When used in a vanquish action, gain power equal to twice the strength of the vanquished hero. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that since this card is four power cost, if you're not vanquishing something that's going to net you more than four power, then vanquishing it was never worth it in the first place because you're just gonna be gaining the power that you spent to get the hood on the board. It's kind of a shame that this card isn't better because I really, really love the hood, but I still believe that this does come up in certain specific circumstances to be helpful, especially when you have a really, really strong opponent, you can get a ton of power and then you don't even have to worry about controlled locations for a while. Now moving on to Madame Mask's item cards, we're gonna go ahead and start off with Tools of the Trade. This is a one power cost item card that says, when played, attach Tools of the Trade to an ally that you control. That ally will gain plus two strength and cannot be used on contract vanquish actions. This is a really great card, very cheap and nice buff. I would definitely prioritize trying to get this on the Syndicate and in some special circumstances, maybe your Nefaria family members if you already have a ton of them on the board and you're maintaining good control. The next item is the Dreadnoughts. This is a two power cost item card that says, play and attach Dreadnoughts to a hero in another player's domain. That hero loses two strength and when defeated by any villain, counts as a contract vanquish for Madame Mask. And I'm really split by this card, honestly, because every villain in other players' domains is a potential vendetta for you. However, if there is already a lot of heroes out there, I have seen this to be a little bit helpful in order to gain some money if you're having troubles. But I'm hoping that this guide will actually help you be able to not have those struggles. So sometimes it's best just to discard this card and get rid of it. And then the final and best item in her deck is going to be the decoy. This is a three power cost item card that says any ally used in a vanquish action at the same location as decoy is returned to Madame Mask's hand. Decoy is then discarded. This is a very good card because this opens up the opportunity to vanquish with those cards that you previously might not have wanted to for fear of losing them. Cards like Count Nefaria, this is a great card to combo it with. I would definitely play a decoy at his location. Or also the Syndicate would be another great target because they have such high strength and you could pop off their ability of bringing all heroes to the Syndicate's location multiple times. 
Now moving on to Madame Mask's effect cards, we are gonna start with On the Hunt. This is a zero power cost effect card that says, relocate any ally you control to a location in Madame Mask's domain with a hero. Now the nice thing about this card is that it is completely free and allows you to help a little bit with positioning. However, it is mostly a utility card and unless it is blatantly useful at the moment, I would probably just go ahead and discard it. Escape Plan is a zero cost effect card that says relocate any hero from Madame Mask's domain to any other domain. And this is a pretty good card, but I would be very careful using it. It could be nice because you're able to actually move a hero and cover up an opponent's actions, but your fear would be that your opponent is going to defeat them before you. You might wanna have a line of sight card saved if you are using this and plan to remove it very quickly. And then we've got the two power costs setting a trap card. This allows you to relocate any hero in another villain's domain to any location in Madame Mask's domain. This is an excellent card because this gives you control of another hero that you can definitely get a vendetta off of. I would definitely not discard this card. I would make sure that I'm using it in order to get a hero into your domain. No Mercy is a three power cost effect card that says gain a vanquish action. The hero defeated by this vanquish action counts as a contract and toward Madame Mask's vendetta. And this is great for multiple reasons. One reason is that you will likely get the power cost back, so it will be like you're not spending any power. Another reason is that this can help you vanquish in a spot that you don't have a vanquish action, which would be Hell's Kitchen. And at locations like Manhattan and Neferia Castle, this would actually allow you to vanquish multiple times in a single turn, which can help you kind of hike up that vendetta track, which is awesome. And last but certainly not least, we've got the three power cost line of sight card. And this is one of my favorite effect cards because I just think it's very cool and very thematic. It says to gain a vanquish action, you may target any hero in any domain other than Madame Masks with this vanquish action essentially allowing you to defeat a hero in another player's domain. This is a very satisfying thing to do, and in a way, it does help them. But really, they're gonna be trying to keep you away from heroes anyway, so this is just another way to ensure that you're getting up that vendetta track, and it just feels so good. And then we've got the two specialty cards that come with Madame Mask, starting with Payday, which is a two power cost card. It says, when collecting power from a contract, gain plus one power. Now, this is not super good, mainly because I don't really like doing contract vanquish actions, which I'm gonna go ahead and talk more about in a little bit. But hey, you know, it's only two power, so it might be worth Playing. However, that brings me to her second specialty, which is the two power cost Call Me Big M. This says, when collecting power from a controlled location, gain plus two power. And this will pay back itself so quickly and then pay in dividends later. So this is an essential play, a very, very good card, and will help you in your route to gaining power that isn't contract vanquishes. And now that we have talked about Madame Mask's cards, let's go ahead and look at the four locations in her domain, starting with Manhattan. Now, Madame Mask's domain is a little bit weird. Like I said, there is going to be no power action icons. So just bear with me because there is a lot of potential here. At Manhattan, you've got two play a card actions, one vanquish action and one relocate action. This can be good because this allows you to use combos with those two play a card actions. This is one of two locations that you have the relocate action and the only one that cannot be covered. So this will be an important location to get positioning around with your allies. Then we've got Hell's Kitchen. This has one play a card action, one relocate action, one activate action, and one discard action. 
this is a pretty good location that becomes kind of a difficult one when covered by an opponent. This is also the one of two activate actions in your realm, so this one's definitely going to be a more common location when you're trying to get a little extra power off of your Vendetta action or when you're trying to activate Count Nefaria. Speaking of Nefaria, we've got Nefaria Castle. This has two play a card actions, one fate action, as well as a vanquish action. And this location is excellent. It is one of my favorite locations in her domain for sure. This has so much potential, especially if uncovered. Being able to play two cards and vanquish allows for some major, major potential. And then lastly, we've got the Magia Casino ship. This has a vanquish action, an activate action, a discard action, as well as a fate action. And this is definitely a utility location. There is no play a card action here, so the only reason you're going to want to come here is if you need a very specific action. Very, very interesting location, one that only comes up in certain circumstances. Not bad by any means, but certainly one that is very, very niche in its use. If you want to get good at this character, you have to put the time into understanding and learning this character. Gaining no power completely changes the way that we think about playing this game. It just opens up so many weird opportunities with the board. And so my first tip is controlling the city is essential. This is so important. Getting those Nefaria family members at each location, it really is going to have to be your first goal. You don't want to be doing contract vanquish actions. If you've got Nefaria family members at each location, you are going to be getting stacked with all of the cash. Now, the only way for your opponents to stop you from gaining all that cash is by playing fates onto you to make sure that you don't control those locations. But when they do that, you can defeat them and increase your vendetta. So it just works in your favor. Now, there are some specific cards that you actually need in order to make this character work. All the cards that are going to get heroes to you are going to give you vanquish actions to take out heroes without using vanquish actions on your board. First off, how do we get heroes into our domain? That's going to be using setting a trap as well as Count Nefaria. Now the sad thing is there is only one copy of Count Nefaria as well as two copies of setting a trap. Now the other important cards are going to be cards that give you vanquish actions, cards like line of sight and no mercy. And this gives you the ability to use the regular vanquish action as well as use these to do vanquishes, even to the point of being able to use both of these cards and a vanquish action getting up to three vendetta in one turn which is absolutely insane and feels very satisfying these cards are the specific cards that are going to be so important to your gameplay and you're going to want to focus on using these cards to perfection while playing her And as a final tip, I'm sure you assumed that this was coming at some point in this video, but you need to be fading and you need to be fading a lot. This gives you options to target with those cards that we talked about earlier. This also makes your opponents hopefully pretty irritated. Maybe they'll want to fade you back. Then you can go ahead and get some more targets on your board. Fading is a huge part of this character because you need heroes in order to win. Heroes have to exist in order for you to remove them. Once you take into account all of these tips, I truly believe that if you practice, you will be able to win as Madame Mask in no time. Thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. And remember, as my most final tip, always have fun.